And if you don't know what your goals are, you'll likely say yes to anything because for those who don't really have anything going on, everything kind of sounds like a good solution. Everybody, welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to say no. Saying no is hard oftentimes, especially if you're a people pleaser and extrovert. Trust me, I've lived that life. I was a yes man. It literally is a comment on my LinkedIn profile from a previous manager saying something along the lines of, if Chris has any flaws, it's that he is too eager to assist people. It was something like that where I bit off more than I could chew, which caused me to have a lack of performance. And so it's kind of like a nice way of saying that I said yes to too many things. Learning how to say no was something that really changed the game for me and opened up my space and peace of mind. It's incredibly important. And the way that I like to think about this is that if you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Like, what are you giving up? Whenever you say yes to something, you're giving up something. If you say yes and you overextend yourself and now you realize, oops, I'm gonna skip my son's soccer game or my daughter's like band concert because you said yes to something else, that is an example of how you're saying no to something else. Once you say yes, it's very hard to say no. It's a lot easier to just rip the Band-Aid off sometimes and say no straight up. And you have to define your priorities. What's important to you? Is it your business? Is it family? There's like different priorities, right? Right? A certain thing in business may kind of take priority over family time if it's extremely urgent and could cost you the business. If it's just like an annoyed customer and they want to talk to you at its after hours, but it's like your kid's soccer game that you promised you were going to go to, you can kind of make that decision as you go based on what's important to you. And if you don't know what your goals are, you'll likely say yes to anything because for those who don't really have anything going on, everything kind of sounds like a good solution. We all know people who kind of fall for every single pyramid scheme, right? They're, they're sucked into one and then they're selling stuff on Facebook and promoting it and awkwardly inviting you to a coffee shop only to pitch you on it. And then a couple months later, they're onto something else entirely, different product, uh, different energy. I don't know, like there's some out there that I've seen and they're all really just trying to sell you on selling others to get into there. But anyway, the people who kind of fall for those things are the ones who aren't really sure what they want to focus on and what they're going to do. They're saying yes to too many things. They're getting the shiny object syndrome. They're thinking about the outcome and all the potential money if they were to hit the highest levels in these places that are very unlikely to hit. And, and they're doing all those things instead of getting committed and focused and actually staying consistent and persistent along the path to success. And I understand that it is hard and awkward sometimes to say no. You feel like you're letting someone down, whether it's a friend or a family member, it just, it's tough to say no because people feel guilt tripped. That's a little phrase that I like to use where you feel like you have to do something or you're obligated to do something. It happens to us all. Like if my parents ask me to for some help with something, I will likely help or make an exception for them. And if someone else made the same request, I may be like, hell no, I would never do that, right? So it kind of depends who it's for, made, making some exceptions from time to time. In my opinion, you have to learn how to say no more frequently and be selective. Understand what your goals and priorities are and have a little filter. When someone asks something from you, let it go through that little filter. Does it align with what I'm actually doing? Is it important? Does it drive me closer? closer to my goals? Does it help strengthen my relationship with this family member or friend? Like if those are part of your filters, run it through there. And based on that, you should have like a yes, no. If you're thinking of like the little chart, that's like, if this, then that, if this, then yes, if no, then that go back over here. You should draw that out for yourself because if somebody has some random request from me, like my buddy randomly, I told you on a couple episodes ago, invited me to go climb a crane at a construction site. And I'm like, that is going to the no box. Sorry, I'm not the person that you knew back in middle school. Things have changed. I've changed. I've grown. You've got to know that that's a no. That was an instant no for me. I didn't have to think about it twice. I didn't have to say, let me think about it. I didn't say, hmm, maybe. I said, no, dude, like I, I don't do that anymore. And so you have to know, is it a yes or a no? And the rule of thumb that I recommend you follow for me lately, I heard this on a podcast or maybe I saw a post on Instagram. It was a quote saying, if it's not a hell yes, it's usually a no. So it has to be a hell yes for me, either aligning with what I'm trying to do, something that I really love, something that I enjoy that's like fun for me. And if it is not a hell yes, it's usually a no. And again, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of meh, there's a lot of meh, or I don't really want to do that, that I've had to do before because I felt kind of obligated. It was a family member or close, you know, like a sibling or something, wanted something or friend. I have gone a little bit above and beyond in terms of what I usually do. But if it's not someone who's close to me, oh, man, is tough. I, I can say no very quickly now, whether it's like a sales pitch, 
or someone trying to haggle me on the street, like all kinds of things. I'm very good at just saying, sorry, no, I'm not interested. No, thank you. And cutting it short because time is money. Time is precious. As I've mentioned, you can't get it back. So even if I'm on the phone and someone's trying to pitch me on some sales thing and I'm really not interested and I'm busy and I've got like a client calling at the same time, I might even just hang up as mean as it sounds. Like if it's not a hell yes, it's a no that includes sales calls or people who book a call with me acting as if they want to work with me and then they try to sell me something. And yeah, there's so many things about it. So if you feel like meh about it, or I don't really care about this thing, I don't really want to do it. It's possible to make it a no. And if it has to be done, it does not have to be you. You can always put an automation in place. You can fire, find a virtual assistant to actually do this for you. This means saying no to things like weddings, parties as well. If you're not feeling it, I've said no to family members, weddings. Like I don't need to go to a bunch of weddings. I wish them the best. I may send a little gift or whatever, but like, I don't feel obligated. And so I want you to not feel obligated to go to your second cousin, sister's twice removed brother's birthday party because you feel guilt tripped. Again, play into the relationship. Like, are they important to you? Do you feel connected to them? If so, that may play a little bit more of a role in you attending than if there's some random family member that you haven't even met before. And I know this may sound harsh, but this is what is required to get to the next level. A lot of people won't understand this. They work from nine to five, five days a week. They expect you to go to little Bobby's birthday party on Saturday. That ain't me. My time is limited. I mean, it's very difficult for me to do things that I don't enjoy doing, especially if I feel like there's no purpose or maybe I have no connection to the people there. And so personally, I believe that this is what is required to get to the next level on top of the peace of mind that I actually get as well. So that's it for today. Practice saying no, rip the bandaid off. It's easier to say no up front than to dance around it. If it's a no, no, don't say maybe, don't say, let me think about it. Don't delay and procrastinate it because it's going to make it worse and harder to say no closer to the time of the event than if you just say it, say no up front and never commit to it. But again, have that filter in your mind. If it's not a hell yes, it can be a no. If it's a maybe, maybe it can be a yes, but just use your own judgment. For me, I'm really sticking to that. If it's not a hell yes, it's probably going to be a no with very few exceptions. So that's it for now. I will catch you on the next episode. Thanks so much for your time and for tuning in and have a great day.